pound for pound, what is the best journalistic organization in the United States of America? A lot of people like Fox News, and there are sort of mini Fox Newses, whether it's One America News or Newsmax. But in terms of making a lot of results with a small team and a small budget, no one comes close to our friends at Project Veritas. They really just put microphones to leftists and progressives and liberals and Democrats, typically in a hidden camera situation when those people are being candid. And they've done a tremendous amount of work. They would have had a Pulitzer Prize by now if they weren't conservative. Well, Project Veritas has done it again. I want to play for you a short video that they recently released, and then we'll talk to R.C. Maxwell, their spokesperson, all about it. Take a look at this, and we'll come right back. Anyone who is recruiting and transporting minors for the purpose of labor, that is trafficking, that is a federal offense. Our undercover journalists traveled to Florida. There, they met 20-year-old Frander, who admitted to paying for his sponsor. And never having lived at his sponsor's address. We met a 15-year-old girl in Houston who told us she had to drop out of school to work long hours in a restaurant kitchen because she owes money to the cartels. Porque tuviste que pagar tu deuda, ¿no? Pero qué hora, de qué hora, qué hora trabajas? A las cuatro me entra y sale las dos de la mañana. Who was recruiting the children? How many were in this particular ring? So sometimes it requires a lot of investigations. So if it's labor trafficking, they would be following those vans to where they were taking the children to work. So in other words, Project Veritas probably has to go out and do the... Uh... HHS Office of the Inspector General's job for them. ¿Y estás trabajando también? ¿Y dónde trabajas? Me lleven y así. Ah, donde te lleven. Wow. ¿Y cuánto tiempo tienes de estar aquí? Allowing these kinds of businesses to thrive because of this labor trafficking, it's cruel and exploitative, and it's creating conditions really of slavery again in our country. I don't understand why anybody would want to move a child quickly as opposed to vetting that the place that the child is going is safe. Incredible. They really are trafficking children. And these are not women being trafficked for purposes of sexual exploitation. But of course, that happens too. That lady there, Tara Lee Rodas, was the whistleblower It's amazing to see Project Veritas using Spanish language undercover reporters, kids. Well, let's talk to R.C. Maxwell, spokesperson for Project Veritas, to learn more about the story. Wow, this is terrifying. And that southern border is basically open. Now, tell us, one of those kids, 17 years old, just arrived in the last month. Help me understand the connection, R.C., between these kids and the U.S. government, because the U.S. government knows about these kids, right? You are correct. And if I can explain your audience, you guys may remember during the Trump administration, there was lots of discussion about pausing some of these minors coming into the country, not letting them essentially unite with the people who brought them over. Trump called a lot of these individuals coyotes. That caused a lot of controversy. Enter the Biden administration who took over border policy And there was a directive through HHS, which was Field Directive 10, which preferred speed over vetting in terms of family unification. That seemed like a good thing. It was applauded by migrant organizations and it was touted by the government officials themselves. Fast forward to now, Project Veritas, we were approached by a whistleblower who actually let us know 
she signed up to volunteer to you reunite these kids with their family members. She, she said that there were suspicious flags on many of these sponsors. Many of these sponsors don't actually have to be a U.S. citizen. They don't need a traditional identification to pick up these kids. And we were, we essentially had now had to essentially do shoe leather journalism and confirm this information that these people who were sponsors were flagged for good reasons. And it turns out that they were. Huh. Um, we, our journalists hit the ground in Texas and in Florida, and we found out that many of these kids were labor trafficked. Many of these kids were not in school. Many of these kids were in deplorable conditions. And all of this is the result of Field Guidance 10, which put these kids in situations that were questionable. And unfortunately, they are subjected to not only labor abuse, but also sexual abuse. Huh. You know, the crazy thing here is it was in the name of reunifying children with their families. But what your investigation suggests is that they're not their families. These are games. These are traffickers. These are, as that uh, whistleblower Tara Lee Rhoda suggested, a modern form of indentured servitude, really. Um, so it's almost like they're being placed in harm's way positively by the government. Am I getting that wrong? That they, that they, in the name of reuniting these kids with family, they've actually put them with the bad guys. Correct. Your audience may be wondering, we've heard of human trafficking before. We know there are issues with the southern border. What's new here? Well, the issue here is that since this policy has changed under Field Guidance 10, taxpayer dollars are being used not only to house these minors, but at some points in time to ship them from one facility to another so they can be picked up by their sponsor, who, as we have just uncovered, in many instances are human traffickers. So the federal government is playing a role in transporting these people over. Shocking, but what's more shocking is that the government is very aware. Tower, our whistleblower, Tara, she's a very brave woman. She's been screaming this from the mountaintops at the place that she's worked within the government. She had to come to Project Veritas because not only would no one else kind of corroborate this information, but no one else were willing to listen. In fact, one horrible soundbite she got from an attorney within the government was that these traffickers aren't suing us. So it's easier to deal almost with them as opposed to the system that President Trump was having a tough time dealing with, which was the media firestorm over separating kids at the border. Huh. That's an excerpt from my show every night. It's called The Ezra Levant Show. That's me, Ezra Levant. Uh, you can see the whole thing behind our paywall. Well, there's a lot of goodies behind there. I do a show every weeknight. My friends Sheila Gunn-Reed and David Menzies and Nat and Kat have their shows too. You get a ton of content for just eight bucks a month. There's so much in there you won't find anywhere else. Go to rebelnewsplus.com.